Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophynet, the babbling Belgian, and welcome back to our new series. Um, to decide which game we would play, I put out a little video asking you guys what you would prefer. I didn't get a ton of feedback, of course, because I'm used to that, but uh, I did get two comments. One from... I set up four games that I wanted to, uh, to try out, uh, I wanted to play on the channel. That was Dragon Age, Kingdom Hearts, Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Borderlands 2 and of course in true enough fashion I got two comments each picking two different games so didn't entirely help me out with deciding but I wanted to highlight these comments here so Vryer here said that I would uh, that he would be most interested in a playthrough of Dragon Age or Kingdom Hearts and Owen right here wanted to uh, see me play Assassin's Creed Odyssey Borderlands 2 or maybe Red Dead Redemption 2, but I'm uh, not gonna do that. So yeah, two people that wanted to play, uh, see me play those four things. But Vryer also did say something interesting. So the most enjoyable playthroughs are those where the player is really into the game. I kind of took that to heart. And for me, of those four games, Borderlands is still my favorite series. So that's what it's going to be. Hope you guys agree with that because I really I really like Borderlands and I have really done something that I replayed aside from the Bioshock series so uh, this is not gonna be a blind playthrough but a playthrough that I can give a lot of backstory to. Borderlands is a great series it is a first-person shooter so I haven't really done any of those yet but it's a kind of RPG first-person shooter. The main draw for me to Borderlands, aside from it being a really great loot shooter, is that it's also hilariously well written. Um, there's a lot of dialogue in this game, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually pump up the dialogue uh, audio compared to everything else, so we can follow that along. And I'm gonna try to not talk over too much of it, but there's a whole shit ton of dialogue, so uh, I'm not always gonna be able to do that. So before we head in, I'd like to thank you all for just finding this video. If you found this video, let me know where you found it, if you're new to the channel, because I'm really curious where you guys uh, find my channel and how you come to be here. So uh, I usually do very thorough playthroughs, uh, finding everything in every nook and cranny as far as I can. I'm gonna try to do this a bit less here because it's a really big game. We're gonna be in this for a while. These are going to be a bit shorter episodes than we're used to, but I'm going to try to do more of them. So I'm going to try and spread out the playthrough on the interesting parts of the game, the most interesting side quests as well, so we get the most interesting stories on the channel and skip most of the fat. So aim about, I'm aiming about at half, half an hour per episode, so that's around the length that the Thronebreaker episodes were as well, but not as long as my uh, current Sekiro playthroughs. Because, uh, yeah, that would be a bit too much work for me as well. So uh, let's head straight in to a new game. So, you want to hear another story, huh? And the setup One for the story. The fate of Pandora hangs in the balance. If not too bad, I'm telling you anyway. First, there was the vault. An alien prison opened with a mystical key. To the warriors who opened it, the vault was just a container of tentacles and disappointment. They vanished into the wastelands, certain that the vault held no treasure at all. They were wrong. The vault's opening triggered the growth of Iridium, a priceless alien element. Soon, the rare and valuable mineral emerged all across Pandora. Its appearance attracted many, including the Hyperion Corporation. They came to Pandora to mine Iridium and bring order to the savage planet. Through their excavations, Hyperion uncovered evidence of an even greater vault. Their leader vowed to find it, to use its power to civilize the Borderlands once and for all. But Hyperion weren't the only ones searching for the next vault's alien power. The call of danger and loot is not so easily resisted. Certain warriors came to Pandora in droves to uncover its hidden secrets. Some would call them adventurers. Others call them fools. But I call them vault hunters. 
Our story begins with them, and with a man named Handsome Jack. With Handsome Jack. And then we get our intro cinematic, which is always great in the Borderlands series. If you watched my channel for a while now, you might have seen our Tales from the Borderlands playthrough, which is also an amazing game, which you almost can't get anymore because of... Uh, well, the downfall of Telltale games, sadly, but Tales from the Borderlands is probably one of their best products and based on the Borderlands franchise, playing out after this one. So what you're looking at is a skag, so it's kind of a dog but with a mouth that opens horizontally, like that. And he just got run over, already indicating kind of the dark humor that's uh, prevalent in these games. So this being the second game in the franchise, you might think that you might have missed some background. Um, not really. Uh, Pandora is a planet that we've played on in the first game as well. And there's some kind of alien construction over there. And there we go, getting struck by the train. And the amazing music kicking in. I'm probably going to have to mute that a bit. Because that's probably, yeah, that's going to have uh, hmm, copyright infringements. But I'm gonna run this cinematic anyway. Probably gonna put something else underneath there. But what was I saying? Yeah, the first game, we were at Pandora as well. Uh, there are alien constructions known as vaults, as Marcus, the storyteller, just told us. And those vaults contain, well, they think treasure. And they are vault hunters that are kind of mercenaries looking for the treasure within those vaults. And these are the four vault hunters of this game. And there we go, they get uh, kind of ambushed by Handsome Jack, the leader of the Hyperion Corporation we heard about. And this is just an introduction to the four basic vault hunters. So Axton, the commando, kind of the soldier type. And in the first game, the bad guys were the Atlas Corporation also looking for the vault and its contents but the disappointing story there was that in the end the vault opened up so Maya uh, the vault opened up and there was a giant alien monster inside and nothing else so and that was basically how the game ended as well but as you can see from this beginning cinematic the opening of the vault there uh, triggered some kind of eruption of iridium a special uh, a special kind of compound that was really valuable and then we have our last hero, so we got Salvador the Gunslinger. And then we have uh, this guy over here, which is a really cool guy. Zero. There we go. That's a number. No title for him. Well, he's kind of a cyber ninja, so... If you've uh, seen Tales of the Borderlands, you know he's my favorite character in the games as well. So, uh, we're gonna actually play as him. But I'm gonna let this play out a bit. There's music cut out. It's cute that y'all think you're the heroes of this little adventure, but you're not. Welcome to Pandora, kiddos. And there we go. This game actually starts you off by getting blown up. Um, we're actually, I also didn't, didn't talk about that. We're actually playing the Handsome Collection on PS4. And there we have the character selection. I'm going to quickly go over the... Uh, possible heroes because there's two of them that we haven't seen in the beginning cinematic so we have Axton the commando uh, who can deploy a turret as you saw him do in the cutscene now we have Zero the assassin who can as you can see also make duplicates of himself and turn invisible then you have Maya the siren who can hold things in place mostly enemies in place with her magical abilities because she as a siren has it's kind of a sort of magician but it's yeah we're gonna explain that later on in the game now we have salvador the gunzerker a uh tall uh tall the other way around a small burly man who can actually gunzerk which is the only character that can actually dual wield guns as his action skill and we have gauge the macromancer who can deploy a uh death trap so a giant mech that floats behind her and shoots everything he can find and then we have Krieg the Psycho, uh, well, the only kind of purely melee character if you're uh, going for his action skill. So his action skill removes all your guns temporarily and lets you rage around with a buzz axe, a sort of a hand axe that has a buzzsaw attached to it. Um, I was originally thinking about doing it with Krieg, but that's 
gonna be boring really really quickly so i think i'm just gonna go for zero as i intended originally so long range sniping or slitting throat so he kind of has a bit of both so you can do long range he can do uh melee really nicely as well so here we go and like that, I'm going to turn him into an Arkham Knight kind of uh, zero. Look at that. He's looking really cool, isn't he? So let's confirm and get going with the game itself. So we got blown up by Handsome Jack. Great. Another dead bolt hunter. Handsome Jack's been busy. And there we have our first actually interactable character with Claptrap. If you played any Borderlands or has seen You're any uh, commercials yes. about Borderlands, you probably know this guy. So you either love him, you either hate him, because he's uh, a bit of a weirdo. So you're gonna see a lot of that abbreviation yeah. into Take kind of words stuff in this game so setting up the heads up display okay thank you for the golden keys so there we go a bit of a there we go i wonder what it's like to have a belly button everything soon but know this you're alive for a reason, and I am here to help you. Wait, did they change that? I feel like that wasn't the actual human face of Angel. So Angel is a sort of AI that also helped you out in the first game. And I'm not going to tell you anything more. So the Hyperion Corporation is a weapons manufacturer. And you can see it's Space Station over there. And it's led by Handsome Jack, the bad guy. Um... I'm gonna tell you a bit about the peculiarities of this game as well. This sign now says welcome, but if you stay and look at it a bit, it actually changes to go away. And there's a lot of other uh, stuff that it can say. Uh, I think even if you go to the back, no, it's just reversed. I know it changes to other things regularly, well but. Uh, Your ability to walk short distances without dying will be Handsome Jack's downfall. Well, technically, it will. I see you. There we go. I see you. That's a, a portal reference, actually, which is really, really cool. And then we have Claptrap's house. For for some reason, he has decorated with other Claptraps. And open. There we go. Just a little added security. Gotta keep those bully mongs at bay, or they'll rip your eyes out. So this is what most of the game is: opening up health containers. Uh, well, not health containers, just containers in general, and picking up stuff. So Claptrap's place looks really, really cozy. He's uh, warming up so by the fire. And of course, comedic timing. There's our first boss character. So he's always introduced like... Well, bosses are always introduced like this. This is a normal cinematic, but we'll get them introduced later on better. So objective indicated. Knuckle Dragger. Knuckle Dragger pulled out Claptrap size, And he's now going to bump into anything. Uh, the marker I found here is of sort of uh, collectible. So if you activate that, you get uh, badass points as well. I'm going to quickly show you that. So if you go to the final, okay, then there's an audio diary. And then I can just swap out the SMG for the sniper rifle. And that should be fine for now. Easy. What the hell are you? I want a challenge. 
So there we go. The every character has this sort of beginning audio diary in his or her inventory, indicating what the character is all about. So that zero is basically his stuck sh stick stick stick. Um, he wants to have a challenge. Uh, now that I think about it, I should actually up the audio. So there we go, dialogue audio pumped up. And then I wanted to show off the badass rank. So that's the badass rank. Um, every time you do any of the challenges over here per character, you actually get badass ranks. Every number of badass ranks you get gives you a badass token and tokens can be added to this list of bonus stats, which actually increase over time. So the more characters you have, the more uh, base bonus stats you'll get, which I have played a lot of this game, so I have a lot of badass points in it already. Um, so there's a lot of things in this place, I'm not going to show you everything, but I'm just going to open up a few containers here to get, well, ammo a bit. And now you have, yeah, just magazines like this, gun-ho, and then I don't know what this is. That's just pictures of Claptrap and a bikini for some reason. Uh, but yeah, the gun in the cabinet, unless we take that, it's not uh, actually going any Once further. Upon a time, four vault hunters changed Pandora forever, but their time has passed. Thanks to Handsome Jack, Pandora needs a new hero. I know that hero is you. Apart from the excruciating pain, this is great! I've been waiting for a mighty vault hunter to help me reach Sanctuary! I will be your wise leader, and you shall be my fearsome <laughs> so first things first we need to get the sanctuary but we also got the message from angel that she's looking for the vault hunter to actually save pandora save from what is unclear at the moment she's hinting at saving pandora from handsome jack but handsome jack just arrived so it's a bit weird to already start talking about him being the bad guy another thing that's also interesting is that in the beginning cinematic a handsome Jack actually raises up a good point. He says, you think this is your story. You might be wrong about that. Great! Just let me get this door open and we'll hunt ourselves a bully mob. Because basically Borderlands 2 is even more the story of handsome Jack himself than oh, anything see, else. Guy, minion, let me know if I'm going to run into anything. And there we go, of course. I'll just assume you didn't see Yes, that. I didn't see that. So... I'm gonna also talk Even about gun manufacturers. So, the gun we're holding is actually a Hyperion gun, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, it's a Vladov gun. So, every gun has a manufacturer. So, these are Hyperion guns, as the SMG here shows. And every gun manufacturer has its own style. The gun we're using at the moment is a Vladov rifle. And Vladov is all about fire rate. So this uh, every Vladov gun has an increased fire rate. This glacier and into the city of Sanctuary. That is the only place you will be safe. So the city of Sanctuary where we will be safe. So every gun manufacturer has its own particular style and that indicates the extra stats you'll get from that gun and later on with legendary guns we'll be able to uh, get even more bonuses based on the gun manufacturer itself. So basic gunplay is just, uh, well, pretty much what's going on in every other game. Uh, just shoot them in the head. And now we have a few of them extra. And then you can see, you can actually get challenge progress on everything over there in the top, the bottom left. Because you're getting, uh, you're completing challenges along the way. But that's that. I'm just going to quickly skip forward and then everything starts rumbling. They say Jack's drilling operations are causing those earthquakes. That, or your mom just got out of bed. Zing! Zing! You'll need that funny little robot's help to reach Sanctuary, the last bastion of the resistance against Jack, and the only place you'll be truly safe. Get to Sanctuary. So Jack, Handsome Jack, is a new character, and there goes Claptrap, is a new character in uh, Borderlands 2, and it's just to indicate that we're starting something new with the Hyperion Corporation itself. It wasn't talked about before. And as you can hear, our character also quips while you're killing enemies. There is no fall damage in this game, so you can do everything you want, and there's a bigger bully mom. 
So bully monks are these kind of ape thingies with four arms. I don't hear bully monks anymore. Kind of just waiting on you to get me out of here. So this dialogue actually keeps going. If you, it goes on for a good minute or three, I think, uh, to dig him out. So this, ge ge this keeps going, so I'm gonna just dig him out because otherwise he's gonna keep going. Uh, and I, I just wanna get through these first areas because I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows about these. And that's Jack himself. Vault hunters show up. Vault hunter looks for the new vault. Vault hunter gets killed by me. You see, you see, in the problem here, you're still alive. So if you could just do me a favor and off yourself, that'd be great. Thanks, pumpkin. And there we go. He wants us dead, obviously, because he blew us up. Oh, my eyes are switched back on. I see a tough-looking minion and an incredibly handsome robot, which means that whoever has my eye. Very close. And there we have, um, waiting for the introduction, there we go, Knuckle Dragger, I do love these vignettes. And he has his eye, Claptrap's eye around his back. We're gonna have to be careful because I think he throws something right at the beginning. So headshots are still the best way to go around this. I think at a certain point he actually, this is the first ball so it's not much to talk about. I think he jumps up and then starts throwing things. There we go, the wall sphincters, which is an interesting way of calling that. There we go, and then I think he's landing on top of me, there he is. Just gonna snipe him in the face. You can actually take out, ooh, wow. That usually doesn't happen. You say the word wall sphincters a lot when you're frightened. Got my eye? Great! Now we just gotta find someone to put it back into me. Much as I'm sure you'd like to jam your fist into my skull, optic surgery is best left to professionals. My pal Hammerlock and Lyersburg. And there we go, Skip. There we go. Find Sir Hammerlock. And he's gonna bump into that, giving us a bit more ammo and health. Lyersburg but he needs to go over here. Let's say we cut through it, chum. I wonder how you even know that there's a Hyperion barge over here. Probably from memory, but that was a bit weird. Hyperion tech. Child's play. So now that he's trying to open up the door here, um, he's gonna fail at the moment, but uh, we can talk about Jack's plan. So he's digging up the Iridium, and he believes that digging up Iridium will be enough to open up the vault that he's found. So, uh, again, the story kind of has the same setup as the previous game. And there we go, Angel will open up the door now. Which kind of indicates that, well, Angel is kind of an AI. And then she tells us. So there we go, we get our first weapons crate. These are gonna be the ones that we wanna really check out. And there's a Jacob's uh, shotgun in there. Really low magazine size, but really high output in power. And this would normally be the, the second gun you pick up, uh, aside from, of course, the yellow guns we have because of the... Yes, I'm gonna just touch him. And that's the way the quest actually works. So you can see a bit of an explanation about the quest. We need to turn in with Claptrap and we get a bit of an experience point. On, there we go. Now. And a bit of money. We haven't leveled up. Yeah, we did level up by killing uh, Knuckle Dragger. So we're at level two. Nothing peculiar happens right now uh, unless until you hit level five. So I'm hoping this will be in this episode. This I'm going to hurry up to do that. Let's so let's go through the loading screen. Way. See what I did there? Editing magic. Keep your wits about you, minion. This glacier's run by a bandit named Captain Flint. The jerk kept me as his torture plaything for a few months. We played games like dodge the blowtorch and don't get dunked into the pool of acid. I was really good at the first one. <sighs> Ow. Attention, people of Pandora. Handsome Jack Suck. here, offering a million bucks to whoever brings me the head of the vault hunter who just arrived in Liarsburg. Oh. And I'm still offering a reward for Roland, the mass murdering leader of the Crimson Raiders. Good hunting, bandits. 
So, Roland is the soldier from the first game. So, that's one of the Vault Hunters from the first game. So, every time we'll come across a character that you should know, I'll let you know. Might actually be good. Let's pick that up. So we're starting to find guns already, which is always nice. I'm just going to have to take a look at most of them. Uh, once we get more interesting guns, I'll let you guys know. And we'll experiment with everything we find here. So let's touch the button. He's going to do that for us. And now we saw Captain Flynn, our first really big uh, bandit boss. You can actually get over the wall right here. And there we have our first uh, actual human enemies that actually shoot back. Headshots again is enough to uh, take these guys out. Okay, I'm shooting terribly. Not that this gun is really uh, accurate, but there we go. There we go, starting to murder everything that's running around in here, and the marauders keep spawning. But the bully monks are gonna start messing around with them as well. He's gonna keep spawning, isn't he? There we go. I think that's most of them. I suppose I am in your debt now, aren't I? Come to my shack and I shall restore Claptrap's sight. First, I shall shut off the electrical fence for you. This is probably one of the most funny screens. Funny scenes in the, the beginning of the game. As you can see, the, the electricity hasn't been turned off yet, so... There we goes. Apologies, but when Claptrap speaks, I feel my brain cells committing suicide one by one. I shall be out to I think a lot of people feel that way. And there we have our first human companion. A pleasure to meet you, Vault Hunter. I am Sir Hammerlock. And they're also introduced like that, so only Claptrap doesn't really get an introduction like that, which is a bit weird. At your service. I came out here to research the bully mongs for my almanac, but Captain Flint's men trapped me on this glacier. Many thanks for disposing of them, by the way. To survive a direct run in with Handsome Jack and defeat Captain Flint's bandits? Unheard of. I'm headed to Sanctuary myself. From what I hear, the Crimson Raiders there could use a hero like you. Now, if you could hand me the robot's eye, please. There we go. Let's give him Claptrap's eye. Then I can just... Uh... Well, Claptrap called eye surgery something delicate, but as you can see... Um, Hammerlock doesn't really care about delicate. This, this. Just jam that in there, rotate it a bit, and punch that it. Do it. <laughs> That's that. I am alive. He, you were already alive. Oh dear, he's talking. He is. Minion! Now I've got my eyesight back, and you're far uglier than I remembered. Time to join up with the Crips and Raiders and Sanctuary. So remember, it's remember, he's saying what he's thinking. Jerk bags, like that hammerlock dude. I'm standing right here, dude. Now that Liarsburg is cleared, I might as well turn on the main power. This town's full of things that may be of use to a go-getting slayer of men like yourself. Um, we're gonna do a few small side quests here just to level up. Jack is looking for you. Charming fellow, isn't he? Spouts drivel about bringing peace to the frontier, then shoots unarmed men, women and children like it was going out of style. Ah, I'm spouting exposition again, aren't I? Apologies! Yes, like pretty much every character in this game, you're spouting exposition. So he's going to turn on the mission board over here. We can turn in our mission with him. And we get an assault rifle for that. Ah, fecal matter. The bounty board's broken. The resistance must have disconnected. And we get a shield. I'd plan to post some jobs for you. I will, just speak to me instead. There we go. So normally the mission board would give you quests, but now you can talk to Hammerlock instead. And we got a bit of a shield for from him to, uh, well, as a reward for helping him out. Hello, mercenary person. I have money and a problem. 
So I think I collected all the quests. So I'm going to do the quests and see you guys in a second. Because the quest isn't really interesting. We just need to clear out some bully monks over there. Uh, but there is a string of quests over here with hidden audio diaries. I'm going to do show you that. Because it gives you a bit of information about, um, you know, Handsome Jack in particular. So see you guys in a second. Next time on Borderlands 2, Jack insults some people. I'm rocking my brain trying to think of a name for that diamond pony I bought. I, I was going to call it Piss for Brains in honor of you, but that just feels immature. Hey, maybe Butt Stallion? Nah, that's even worse. I'll tell you what, I'll give it some more thought.